Hi, this is Shiroz from Fast Tech. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, fix a PS4 today with a blue light of death. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix it the easy way. Um, you could also fix this problem with a reflow or a reball, but most people watching this video at home are not going to have the kind of equipment you need to do a proper reflow or a proper reball. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix it the easy way. And um, you, don't, you don't need any specialized equipment for the method I'm about to show you. And it's been very effective so far. Uh, as far as we've uh, we've seen, it's been very success. We've been very successful at fixing PlayStation 4s with this method, um, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that today. And we're also going to be selling the washers that uh, you need for this repair. The link's going to be in the description, and we're going to be selling um, those washers on our website. Um, so let's start. Basically, this PlayStation 4 right here um, is sent in by a customer, and um, I'm going to turn it on for you guys here real quick. Um, and this one um, turns on, but it doesn't, um, the light does not turn white, it keeps pulsing blue. This problem is known as the blue light of death, um, and sometimes the console will turn on and the light will just pulse blue, and other times the console will turn on and then it will shut right back off. They're both basically caused by the same issue, uh, they're both caused by um, defective soldering on the APU chip um, and we can fix that by adding more washers uh, onto the back plate and, and thus adding more pressure to the chip which fixes this problem. So as you can tell this console um, it just the light stays blue it does not go white it just keeps pulsing blue and if I had it plugged in on the TV nothing would come on. Well, I've already done that nothing came on and as you can tell um, yeah the light will just keep pulsing blue nothing will come on uh, this light is supposed to turn white if the console was booting into its operating system, which it's not. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be taking the console apart and I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix this the easy way. So let's start. Okay, so we're going to start taking the PlayStation apart by taking off the uh, warranty sticker at the back. We only need to remove the one on the top here. Uh, just this one here right next to the ports. We don't need to remove the bottom three uh, because we're not accessing that side of the console. We just need to remove the one on the top closest to the hard drive cover. And then uh, when we, once we remove the sticker, there's going to be uh, a Torx T8H screw in there that we're going to remove. that. <clears throat> then we're going to remove the hard drive cover. Just slides right off. And then we're going to remove these two Torx T8H screws that hold this piece of the case on the frame. Once you remove the screws, you can grip the uh, plastic case from the front and just lift and you'll hear the clips being released and then you can just lift it off like so. Okay, once this panel has been removed, you're going to see um, this, you're going to see these two Phillips screws that hold uh, the brace and the back, uh, the back plate onto the motherboard. These are actually screws that apply tension and they apply pressure. Uh, onto the chip, they hold the heat sink in place. And um, what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to be removing these screws and we're going to be adding two washers underneath here so that uh, we have more pressure onto the APU chip and uh, it will make contact again with the motherboard and it will start working again. I'm going to go ahead and remove two Phillips bolts. So, so once we've removed the bolts and we have uh, the brace in our hand, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be putting two of these washers on each side here. Two here and then two here. These are the washers. We're going to be selling these on our website. Um, and we're going to put two on each side. So we're going to put 
One, two, and same thing on the other side. One, oops, drop that one there. And two, just like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts. Now, guys, you can also, um, if your console is really dusty, I would recommend cleaning out the dust. This one wasn't, so we're not going to do that. Um, and also, um, in, in certain instances, you might have to also replace the thermal paste on the APU chip. Uh, but in this case, it wasn't necessary because I don't see a lot of dust or heat buildup or patterns of heat buildup, so we're not going to replace the thermal paste here. But in certain cases, I do recommend taking the motherboard out and also replacing the thermal paste when you're doing this. But it's... In, in most cases, it's optional. So we're going to go ahead and tighten these Phillips bolts after we've installed the washers. You want to make sure they're tight, but not too tight. Uh, and then we're going to reassemble the, the console. Basically, what I did to disassemble it but backward, putting the bolts in, putting the hard drive cover on. This is one of the fastest repairs you can do on a PlayStation 4. And since this is a customer repair, we are gonna put our warranty sticker on it. Because if you get a service done from us, you do get a six months warranty. That's free. You can also upgrade to one or two years or three years also. Uh, so there you have it. Um, it. It's that easy. It took me probably less than five minutes to do what I would imagine. But oh, we're going to plug it in and uh, I'm going to show you guys that it works. There you have it. Looks like it works. It is booting on screen now. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, there you go. And we have a white light on the console. Another successful repair. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and do check out our website at www.fasttech.ca for all kinds of electronics, parts, and repair services. Thank you.